understand shaitan is our greatest enemy. Unless and until we take measures to protect ourselves from shaitan every single day, we are open in an open attack against shaitan. When shaitan, when you enter your home and you don't say, Bismillah, shaitan says, we found a place to stay tonight. Let's go, let's have a party tonight. You say, Bismillah, shaitan has no place to stay. When you're about to eat food, we don't say, Bismillah, he's always there attacking us. And that is what Adam salam was reminded. He said, he was reminded, he said, Ya Adam, sorry, uh, Ya Adam, inna hadha aduwu laka wa li zawjika. And the net result is that he wants, he is being distanced from the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he wants each and every one of us to be distanced from the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why does he want to do that? Because he knows that if insan, they have determination, because of this determination, because of this azam, they will carry on worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will carry on obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the only attack, only weapon that he has is waswasa. So he came to Adam alayhi salam with waswasa. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna laka alla taju'a fiha wa la ta'ara. So he is describing Jannah. That you're not going to have any hunger, you're not going to have to worry about your clothes, you're going to have complete shelter, water, food, everything is given. There's a hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi which mentions that anybody that is given three things in the world, فَهُوَ أَغْنَ nas. He's the, the most richest of the person. A place to stay for a night, food for a day, and, and clothes. فَهُوَ أَغْنَ nas. He's one of the richest persons. Ask yourself this question, how many times do we complain about our states of life? I've been through student life, it's, it's difficult. Sometimes it's very hard for us to live. Sometimes you're barely making your ends meet. Sometimes you want to buy that slice of pizza, but you don't have anything in your pocket. Right? It's difficult. But then remind yourself of this, that you know, there's millions of people around the world that are not provided those privileges. And for us to have contentment is one of the first steps to developing azam, de developing determination. Being content with whatever Allah has given you. If you be content with that, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that, Watch how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts developing this element of azam or determination in, that, in, in, in you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانِ And he came to them and he said, هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكِ اللَّا يَبْلَىٰ What does every person want in the world? To live forever? Or his name at least lives forever? And he wants a lot of money. And that is the fitrah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created from the time of Adam and Islam. So even Shaytan he knew what are the tricks that he can, you know, what are the two ways that he can enter Adam alayhi salam. Now notice how Adam alayhi salam did not need any of this. Allah is taken care of, his clothes were free, his food was free, didn't need to work, everything is going to come to him. But despite that, that's our fitrah, that's our nature. And sometimes when we run after these things, that makes our determination become weak. So when we run after dunya, when we run after these things, when we run after money, and all of, all of the things that are connected to this imperial world, then it enables our determination to go down. Then the next thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَكَلَ مِنْهَا They ate from it. فَبَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا This is a point one of the scholars he mentioned, and I, I wish that, you know, subhanAllah, I remembered his name, but I, I remember his name, I, meant, I was attending one of the lectures and he said something so beautiful, he said just imagine for a second, imagine, okay, that there was a person and that person came in your house and he saw your parents and he forced them on gunpoint to take off their clothes and you're all there. How would you feel towards this person? What would be the feelings you would have towards a person that would enter into your house and ask your mother, your sister, your, your, your father that take off your clothes in front of you? Shaitan was the one that took off the clothes of our grandparents, Adam and Hawa. And the real question to ask is, do we feel that same anger that we would feel towards that person? Do we feel the same anger towards shaitan as we feel towards a person that would do something like that to our parents? If not, then we are not really taking shaitan as our true enemy. It's the greatest threat that each and every one of us have. It's a constant threat, but sometimes we're totally 
unaware of it. We forget about it. 